Hello, welcome and good evening to a very short episode on transistor testers. I already made two episodes about those, one about this one here that I got for cheap on eBay, and then one about this one, which you will not quite recognize, because this is the failed uh, kit that I got it as a present, and by now it's working. And it has got a case, as you can see, a nice 3D printed case of this. So all things for repairing this device goes to my friend Ollie, who figured out that actually the kit that I got from Amazon had one, exactly one wrong component in there, namely the quartz that is um, providing the clock for the whole PCB. And it, I think it was supplied with a 30 megahertz quartz or something and I think it needed an 8 megahertz quartz so the whole thing the microcontroller wouldn't work. Um, replace the quartz and everything is fine and dandy. I was suspecting that it is salvageable because the um, backlight of the LCD would light up and it would react to button presses somehow. Um, so let's check out how the two compare I have inserted the same uh, kind of transistor in here and uh, you can see it already shows me here it's an NPN transistor and here I think I have missed one of the pins because it only identifies as a diode. Let's try again. Let's test again. Yeah it gives us the uh, voltages and everything and the layout. And here it got the same now. Um, also, uh, an NPN transistor tells us also the pins. Uh, the pin labeling is a bit different between those two. And uh, the very nice case that Ollie made here uh, gives us some visual hints where pins 1, 2 and 3 are. So these are the three different pins, green, yellow and blue and the arrows point to the three slots on the right, on the left and the right, where we have pins one and three, and the one arrow here points to the middle one, which is pin two. And the same goes for the top. This tester has also many more features that this one here doesn't. It has a frequency generator and a frequency counter. And uh, we can actually test this one here I haven't uh, built anything for this one here yet to test. It also give, can give some uh, test voltages out of this here. It will run off a 9 volt battery as it is doing right now, but it also has the DC input on the side. Uh, the case that Ollie made is actually pretty sturdy and I like it very much. So if you have the same kit, make sure to check out his Thingiverse page. I will link to it in the description because this uh, makes the whole kit really, really usable in an even in a lab environment. Uh, you've got the he upgraded it with the um, chinch connectors. Is it chinch here? No, it's something else, right? It's the uh, what do you call them? Coaxial cable style things here for the frequency and the banana plugs, the typical lab connectors on the bottom. Also, I noticed that um, this one here works a bit different, I think a bit different for calibration. Um, so you need to connect all three pins or all three probes. If you have probes, I just take some jumper wires, connect them all together. And you also have to have a capacitor with more than 100 farads. So this is exactly 100 farads, one of these. So I put them in parallel and I get 200 farads because it will prompt you to insert them into pins one and three. So when you start up with all three probes connected, it will ask self test mode and we say, no, that was too short. You only have two seconds. Let's try to turn this off. Um, it also has an encoder, which is very nice. So let's do it again. Run the self-test. Yes, please. 
and it will show the internal resistors and it will say disconnect the probes which we will do when prompted isolate probes and I will already put in the slightly fiddlyish Two hundred nanofarads, and it says test end. So that has worked. If you don't uh, do that, it will loop like twenty times through. Please insert something with more than one hundred nanofarads. Also, it seems to forget the color scheme during the self test mode, which is not a bit of a problem. Uh, let's just switch it off right now. So um, we can test any component that the other one can test as well, like for example a diode, it will light up very quickly here and it will show us the forward voltage, some capacitance and some current, uh, the reverse current, leakage current I guess. And what also works for the typical stuff, let's put a resistor in here. And it will tell us probably that it's a 10k resistor, as it should. And it even updates in real time if there's fluctuations or something. First, it even saw some kind of inductance there. Probably some, some glitch. And it will notice that I removed the resistor. And you can probably just plug in the diode as well. Will it test again? No, it won't will be in probably in testing mode only for the resistor so that's fine question is what can we do with the frequency out and for that we'll bring in another old toy namely the do-it-yourself oscilloscope not sure if you remember that that was one of my very first videos a very shoddy solder job that I did back then, and I will do a, oh no, I don't even need that, do a very, very bad way of connecting this, because I don't have any correct uh, plugs for that, so please just look away if you don't like that. Um, and we need a 9 volt supply, which should be somewhere around here hopefully correct polarity, but it seems like that. I'll put the light a bit to the side and bend this over like this so that you can see the screen. It's a bit hard to read, so I'll just zoom in a bit. Yeah, I think you can see that. This will show something not very useful right now. So we'll go into, come on, can I get, please get a menu? Yes, I can. So you can measure frequency or you can generate a frequency. And we'll do the latter. A thousand kilohertz is probably almost too much for this poor thing. We already see something on the one volt scale but I'm gonna go down to 10 Hertz. You will see the trigger here. And we can see um, actually pretty nicely here the, uh, the signal actually. I can try to zoom out a bit and we'll start scrolling. Now we have 0 0.2 seconds per division, 0 0.1 seconds per division. It will catch up now. 50 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, it will stop scrolling. So that's 20 milliseconds per division, and we should see 25. Um, does it make sense? No, uh, 50 milliseconds from one to the next, right? And then 100 milliseconds for a full cycle. Which makes sense, because we have chosen 10 hertz. Um, 50 hertz should give us an equally higher number of steps 
So here we have two milliseconds per division, so two, four, six, eight, ten. So we have a full 20 milliseconds for one cycle, which gives us the 50 hertz, and we see the trigger blinking happily away. Uh, next would be 100 hertz, 250 hertz, we should zoom in a bit, and we can already see some noise here, and it supports like tuning frequencies for musical instruments and let's take one kilohertz one kilohertz already more noise coming up 2.5 kilohertz five kilohertz let's zoom in yeah now we see some ringing here that's probably due to the um maybe due to both but i guess mostly due to the fft in in this oscilloscope 10 kilohertz 25 50 now it gets really bad 10 microseconds per division is the minimum i can get 100 kilohertz and it looks really jaggy because i guess the samples with something like 200 kilohertz so it's really only for audible signals useful and above that we get like total total noise and garbage so useful maybe up to 100 kilohertz in a way, but really it starts to degrade above 10 kilohertz, let's say. Works best with the lower frequencies. But this is very nice, you can use it for sending test frequencies to arbitrary devices, and it seems to be pretty spot on in this range anyway. Can't test with anything higher here. Yeah, so um, this broken thing actually turned out as a very nice device, it seems. Let's zoom out a bit. Um, yeah, it's very functional. It has a lot of features. Uh, you can set uh, all kinds of things. I'm not sure how to get back here. Oh yeah, holding it a bit longer. That works, because you only have like this one button and the encoder wheel. And um, yeah. You can even do pulse width modulation. That's pretty neat. I can show that with the... Actually, let's zoom back in a bit. I can show this with the LED. What are you even gonna use? Um, no, this is not going, going to come out here. It will come out the frequency. I think I need to put it in the other way around. Here we have 10% duty cycle. Can you actually see that? I think so. And we can increase this. And you will see the LED getting brighter. So that's also very nice if you want to trigger something with pulse width modulation. So this is 0%, this is 99% duty cycle. So pretty neat. Like you have a digital dimmer in here as well. Yeah. So, um, extremely nice device here after all, but make sure if you get the kit that it actually works and they seem to be messing up the components sometimes. Uh, I link to the case in the video description. It's really sturdy and rock solid and absolutely perfect for this device. Wish I had something which is as good for this. I have a 3D printed case, but it, I think it was made for something slightly different with a very similar layout. So uh, there's still something to do here. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, leave a like here and uh, share and of course subscribe. See you next time.